Hey everybody, Stan Arthur here. So what do you do when Warp Stabilizer in Premiere Pro or After Effects just won't cut it for what you need? Here's an example of what I'm talking about. In this clip right here, let me press play here, you can see if you watch this spotlight up here, the whole thing is bouncing quite a bit and it's distracting. Well, I tried to use Warp Stabilizer on this in both Premiere Pro and then also in After Effects and nothing I did solved this problem. I think that the the bounce movement is maybe just a little too subtle to work in Warp Stabilizer. So what do you do? Well, I'm just going to start from scratch and take this clip and drop it into a new composition in After Effects. And we can see that the bounce is still there. So what I'm going to do is go over to the Tracker panel, Stabilize Motion, First thing I'm going to do is go to the end of the clip because the thing I want to track is this spotlight right here. So I'm going to take this, move it right up to the spotlight, and we have to make it quite a bit bigger. And unfortunately, when you track an object this big, the tracking takes quite a while. We don't have much movement on this, so we don't need a big outer box here. All I'm going to do now is track this backwards, and we'll come back when that's done. Here we go. Okay, now that that's done, I'm just going to apply the information, the tracking information to the clip by clicking apply. X and Y, yes. Okay, now let's see what we have. Let's render that out and take a look at it. Well, what we have is not perfect. Uh, there's still a little bit of a bump in it, but it's much better than it was. But you're going to see over here on the right, this black bar appearing as the picture drifts out of the frame. So what do we do about that? Well, it, it's just another step, but it's something we have to do if we want to make this better. And we'll show you how we do that. Going back to the beginning, let's figure out where it starts, where the black bar starts to appear, and it's right there where a picture starts drifting away. So at that point, we're going to create a position keyframe. Let me pull this up here to see a little bit better. Uh, I'm going to close up the motion trackers, and, and I'm just going to hit P for position. And we're going to put a keyframe right there. And then we're going to watch this drift out until it stops drifting. Yep, that's where it reverses. So we're going to get close with this. All right. And so I'm going to take my horizontal movement and move it back right there. And I'm going to hit, I'm going to. Uh, highlight both these keyframes and hit F9 for easy ease. Now we're going to go between those frames and see where we can clean it up even more. All right, there's a right, point right there where it seems to stop, and I'm just going to move this into place here. There we go, and it's pretty good. Now it's moving back. Now it's moving back the other way. So. Where does that start? It starts right there. So let's put a keyframe in there. Let's drop a keyframe in. And right about there, I think. Right about there, we can move it back. Now this doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be close enough. And from this keyframe, we're drifting to the right, to right, right there. So let's move it back. Okay. Actually, I don't think I'm quite on it. There we go. And nope. Now from here, it's starting to drift again. So let's drop a keyframe in there. This doesn't take very long. You just got to do it. It's just something you got to do. And it was right about there. We'll move it back. Okay. Get out of there, Facebook notification. And let's keep going. Oh, it's starting to pull back to the left now. So we're going to drop a keyframe in there. And as it moves left, right to there, we're going to move it back and then let's see I think it's moving again it is and it right there 
and pull it back. This is pretty good. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. And one other thing I'm going to do is hit the S key, bring up scale. I'm going to scale this up just 1% to 101%. Let's, take, let's render that out and take a look at that. Now you can see there's a little bit of a bump right around the 2-3 second mark. After that, it's really pretty smooth. Now this is much better than it was much better so once you use the stabilized motion apply it to the clip and then drop your keyframes in I can hit you you here to expose all all of our keyframes here this is uh, the tracking information and then down here is the position information that I put in but once you do that you're gonna have a much smoother clip and it works much better than the warp stabilizer does for a similar kind of clip. I hope this was helpful for you and if you liked it don't forget to give me a big thumbs up like and subscribe. This is Stan Arthur and thanks for watching.